All right, let's continue here. This is going to be a run-through of Philippians chapter 3. And I'm just doing these one after the other, just uploading. I'm uploading the second one right now. While I'm going to record the third one. So we got the section verses 1 through 11, which the e-sword labels as righteousness through faith in Christ. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous. It's not grievous. <clears throat> but for you, it is safe. For you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Very interesting verse there. So he says, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. And he's... <clears throat> To write the same things to you, this to me is not grievous, but for you it is safe. I think he's saying maybe, like I've told you this before, I'm telling you again, and uh, for me to repeat myself on these issues, uh, you know, it's for the better for you, and uh, it doesn't bother me to repeat myself. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, be beware of the concision. Uh, those are interesting. Dogs, does he mean, you know, uh, just all unbelievers, or, or I mean, people who are against the gospel, is he referring to Gentiles? Uh, maybe he's just saying, you know, people who oppose the gospel. Beware of evil workers. Uh, beware of the concision. I think he could be talking about Jewish uh, people, you know, Jews who are not believers in Christ. Now, this is the interesting one, is verse 3, where he says, For we are the circumcision. This is something that I took me a long time to let go of. Is that uh, you know the Bible doesn't speak of God having two distinct peoples, so to say. You know, certainly not today, anyways. Um, I mean, God has always had you know one group of people. It's those who follow Him, those who believe in God. Yes, God had a purpose for the Jews to bring forth the Scriptures, to bring forth the Lord. Uh, you know, Jesus was born of the lineage, you know, of the Jews. And, uh, but God's purpose was always, you know, for believers, uh, the true church. And so when he says that we are the circumcision, that's what he's saying, that we are the people of God. And who's he speaking of? All believers, Jews or Gentiles. Um, so he's not, uh, Anyways, you know, he says, we are the circumcision. He's talking about all believers, which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You know, he's saying, I think, like, how the Jews would have confidence in the flesh because they're trying to earn their way into heaven with their good works. And they don't rejoice in Jesus Christ. So they truly aren't the circumcision. Yes, they may be circumcised physically, uh, they are Jews, but inwardly they are not Jews. And so that's the whole point, is that, you know, who are the true Jews? Well, the church is, Jews and Gentiles. Um, all believers in Christ are the true Jews. They are the true circumcision. And once you realize that, then you realize that basically the whole system of dispensationalism is out the window. And um, so that's something that took me a while to, uh, to come to terms with. But I finally have, and you know that's the correct way to understand the scripture. Uh, circumcise the eighth day. Oh wait, no. Let's go back to verse four. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I count, counted for loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, 
not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. Saying that, you know, our salvation comes by faith. And uh, he talks about winning Christ, like Christ is the prize. Christ is the reward that I may win Christ. Um, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So he's saying all those uh, qualifications that he had, you know, in Hebrew of the Hebrews, that all counted as nothing, uh, as knowing Christ and uh, believing in him and... Uh, having fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. And so, yeah, one of the big things that I get from here is that, you know, we are the circumcision. You and me, any believers in Christ, we are the true Jews, we are the true circumcision. And, um, and that comes by faith, by faith in Christ. So straining toward the goal, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Okay. So I'm just trying to think here. I'm going back to the verse before. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And then he says, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So <clears throat> I'd like to look into this more, but he could be saying here, you know, He's saying not that I'm already perfect. So he's saying, you know, in this life, you know, we're striving towards holiness. We don't have, you know, that complete, you know, sinlessness that we'll have in the afterlife, so to speak. Um, so this goes against what the sinless perfection people teach, you know, that we can be perfect in this life. And here he's saying basically that he's not. He's saying it's, it's not as though I've already attained. Uh, he does know that he's saved, he's confident in that, but he is still striving, um, serving the Lord in this life uh, to attain um, what's in Christ in the end, um, or until, until, you know, he attains that. Anyway, verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those which those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which were, are before. Um, so, you know, his focus is on the kingdom of God. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, he talked about winning Christ up there in verse 8 talks about, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. And so he does say, you know, that we are perfect. Um, could be saying either, you know, I read from the commentary of the other one, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, they were saying perfect is, you know, basically, <clears throat> speaking of believers, or maybe, uh, you know, believers that are a little well-rounded in the faith, or it could mean, you know, he's just saying it as if, you know, we have attained perfection, which we haven't, but, uh, you know, it's basically a certainty to us. And so he's just using that in the present tense, that, you know, believers are perfect um, because 
in a sense, you know, he will be. But that's, you know, something interesting to, to always look at. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Where to we have already attained. Brothers, brethren, be follow, followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as you have us for an ensample. So yeah, it's just, you know, he says, where, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. So it's like, as far as you are in your Christian walk, as much as you have advanced, you know, in your holiness, continue to walk together in that. Says, mark them which walk so as you have us as an ensample. So, you know, Christ is our example, so are the, the you know, the apostles and Paul. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the Christ, of the, of the cross of Christ. Uh, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Hmm. So a lot of this seems kind of self-explanatory, but... You know, our conversation is in heaven. That's a good verse. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, talks about people who turned away, um, straining toward the goal. Straining toward the goal. So it's like, you know, we have the certainty of, you know, we have the certainty of heaven and being with the Lord, and uh, but we're like, you know, on a path or, you know, in a race, and even though we know we have that certainty, we don't just, you know, sit and do nothing or whatever. We're going towards it, and so you know, we need to continue on that path, uh, striving to be uh, you know, the best that we can for the Lord until we reach that goal. So, that's good. I'll go on to chapter 4. God bless.